Okay, in this section we'll be uh, using uh, the uh, definition of work to do some calculations of how much work is done under various conditions. Uh, in this first one we have a 100 newton force that's being applied to a 15 kilogram mass uh, and the object is going to move a distance of 5 meters. It's also moving at constant speed. Now, we're calculating the work done by the applied force. Uh, we'll talk about network at a later time, the total overall work. Uh, but in this case, the force from the, uh, the force of 100 newtons, uh, we're going to determine how much work is done by just that force. Okay, so one of the key things you want to do uh, whenever you're working with a situation is make it clear to yourself which way uh, and uh, how far the displacement of the object is. In this case, it's moving 5 meters and it's going to move horizontally at constant speed, so we assume it's on a flat surface, so it's going to move right directly to the right, 5 meters. Now, to calculate the work done, that's going to be the uh, force that we apply times the uh, distance that it moves times the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in this case, that's 100 newtons times 5 meters times the cosine of 0 degrees. Uh, this one, this uh, displacement is 0 degrees, the uh, applied force is 0 degrees, 0 minus 0 is 0, so there's no uh, angle between the two. Cosine of 0 is 1, so 1 times 100 times 5 uh, gives us a total amount of work of positive 500 joules or 500 newton meters. Uh, now, it's moving at constant speed, so the friction would do a work of negative 500 joules, and therefore the actual energy of the box, or the thing we're moving, would not uh, increase, but there is a applied force does increase the energy. The friction then also decreases the energy. So sometimes you have work done by one force, and it's canceled out by work done by another force. Okay, and the second one, again, I'm going to assume it's moving over a horizontal surface, so the displacement's also 5 meters, but we have a difference here. This time, the angle between the two is not 0, but 30 degrees. So, I'm calculating the work. It's 100 newtons again, same force, and I'm going to multiply that by 5 meters again, same displacement, but now it's the cosine of 30 degrees. Uh, cosine of 30 degrees, 0.886, we multiply that by 100, we multiply that by 5, uh, and we're looking at a total work done of 443. 440 would probably be two significant figures, but I have more than enough here. don't have a lot of significant figures. Uh, <clears throat> now notice, since we pulled at an angle, not all of the 100 newtons, made the box speed up or made the box move. Some of it was directed upward, lifting it off the surface. So only a portion of that force did the work. We deal with how much that portion is by always using the cosine of the angle between the force and the displacement. Uh, and the next one, <clears throat> an upward force is applied to lift a 15 kilogram object to a height of 5 meters at constant speed. Now, since we're going to be moving at constant speed, all the forces have to add up to zero. That means that force F is going to essentially have to be equal to the weight of the box. So if we use 10, meters per se or 10 newtons per kilogram, to keep it simple, then the force that we're applying is going to be 15 kilograms times 10 uh, meters, uh, newtons per kilogram. Uh, is 150 newtons. Now, this object is going to move to a new height, so it's going to go upward, again, 5 meters. Now, that's 90 degrees. The force is 90 degrees. 90 minus 90 is 0 degrees, so there's no difference in the directions. So when I go to calculate the work, it's going to be work equals uh, 150 newtons this time, different force, multiplied by 5 meters, multiply by the cosine of zero degrees. Again, the cosine of zero degrees is one, so 150 uh, times five 
is 750 newtons. Uh, not newtons, uh, newton meters, which are also known as joules. So again, I could write it 750 joules, or I could write it as 750 newton meters. Uh, both are acceptable. Okay, so that's uh, some relatively straightforward applications of the work formula. Okay, and uh, number six, we're just going to do a quick check on whether we uh, know what work is positive or negative. Again, if the work is positive, we should expect some kind of gain of energy. So it should get faster, it should get higher, something should indicate that it's getting more energy. If it's negative work, then we should indicate that the object's going to slow down or get lower, or some combination where we lose energy or have less energy in the object than we did before. So an eastward moving car skids to a stop. So the car is losing speed. So we would call that negative uh, work. Now, it has nothing specifically to do with the eastward car, uh, although if it's moving toward the east, to have a, a negative work done, our applied force would be to the left or negative direction. But again, it's not a, so much about direction, it's about we're gonna lose speed, therefore lose energy. Uh, B, a freshman stands on his toes and lifts a World Civilization book to a top shelf. Now, lifting means you're increasing the height of the object. Higher objects can fall further. Higher objects have more energy than lower objects. So he's added or she has added uh, energy to the object, so positive work. Uh, same kind of idea with the Great America Roller Coaster. It's lifted to the peak, so it's being lifted to a higher height. That's building the energy and then they're going to let it go and it's going to be able to fly through the course because it has gotten that initial energy. Uh, catcher puts out his mitt and catches the ball. The baseball is the thing we're interested in. It's going to slow down and stop. So uh, that's going to be negative work. Uh, notice he's pushing against the motion of the ball. Uh, falling parachute opens the chute and slows down. Now they're falling so gravity is causing them to lose the energy of height which we call gravitational potential energy, and they're slowing down. So there's a couple of different types of work being done here. In both cases, they are reducing the energy of the person, the parachutist. Okay, number seven, a little bit of thought question. Uh, when a force is applied to do work on an object, does the work object always accelerate? Uh, we can go back to our earlier one here. Work was done in all these cases, and yet they all moved at constant speed. So the answer is no. Uh, it's not always, doesn't always cause it to accelerate. Uh, it could cause it to gain height. Uh, it could cause it, if there's positive work done, it could get, cause it to gain some kind of thermal energy, uh, some other form of energy. So it may accelerate, it may speed it up, it may slow it down, but it doesn't have to. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the only thing we know that has to happen is if work, a force is applied and it does work on an object, then that object is either going to gain or lose some form of energy. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to lose what we or gain kinetic energy, which would be the f energy of motion. It doesn't mean it's going to get faster. It also doesn't mean it's going to get slower. We just know that it's going to have some kind of change in its energy state. Okay, we're just going to solve these three problems again using the concepts of work. <coughs> uh, we're going to use 10 newtons per kilogram for G. Uh, the chimney sweeper there is applying a 21.6 newton force downward on an angle of 57.2 degrees with the horizontal, so this is 57.2. Uh, I'm going to displace the broom. Now I'm going to assume the broom is going to move across the level surface at zero degrees. And that's going to be a distance of 6.28 uh, meters. So the total distance moved is 6.28 meters. Again, to calculate the work, it's going to be the force applied, 21.6 newtons, uh, times the uh, distance moves, 6.28 meters. Uh, multiply by the cosine of the angle between the two. Okay, so the cosine between the two. Now the displacement is this way, right? And the force is along this direction, so that is 57.2 degrees between the two. 
Uh, and, and you don't have to worry about negative or anything else. It's just the absolute value of that angle. Uh, so in this case, that's going to be cosine of 57.2 degrees. So 21.6 multiplied by 6.28. Uh, multiply by the cosine of 57.2. Again, just make sure you're in degree mode. Uh, and you'll get 73.481635. one, a whole bunch of different numbers. Uh, we only have three significant figures, so that's going to be 73.5 uh, joules. So the total work done is 73.5 joules. Okay, and part B, bend, pump, and iron applies an upward force of 129. Uh, force to lift a 129 kilogram barbell to a height of 1.98 meters at a constant speed. Uh, so draw a picture uh, to make sure you know what's going on. He's lifting the barbell. He's lifting at a constant speed. So his applied force will be equal to the force of gravity. That means it'll be equal to mg. Uh, he's going to lift at 1.98 meters. It's going to displace straight up and he's pushing straight up. So the angle between the two is going to be zero degrees. 90 minus 90, zero. So to find the work, it's going to be uh, M times G, so 129 kilograms times 10 newtons per kilogram in our case, times uh, 1.98 meters, multiplied by the cosine of zero, which again is one. Uh, 129 times 10 times 1.98, almost 2. Um, we're looking at uh, three significant figures, so 200, uh, sorry, 2,550 uh, joules worth of work. 2,550 joules. Uh, <clears throat> in both these cases so far, the work has been positive. The object has uh, from that particular force, the object has gained some kind of energy. In this case, pushing it upward means it gained uh, potential energy, gravitational potential energy. Uh, so uh, if we push the broom without friction against it in the first part, uh, you would gain a kinetic energy. Okay, in part C, an elevator lifts 12 occupants up 21 floors at a constant speed. The average mass of the occupants is 62.8. So very similar to the barbell, our elevator is going to uh, have to apply a force of 12 occupants multiplied by an average mass of 62.8 kilograms multiplied by a G, which is 10 newtons per kilogram. That's the applied force. Um, <clears throat> it's happening at constant speed, and the direction of motion are both in the same the motion displacement and the uh, force are in the same direction, so the cosine is going to be the cosine of zero. And the height is 76.8 meters, 21 floors. Cosine zero. Again, cosine zero is one, so the work done is 12 times 68, uh, 62.8 uh, times 10 times 76.8 times one. Uh, we have 76.8 meters, 62.8 kilograms, 12.0, we could probably call it occupants. So three significant figures, we're looking at 579,000, 579,000 joules worth of work, a significant amount of work. Okay, so that's how you calculate work. Uh, we'll look more detail as how work changes energy as we go along, different forms of energy. Uh, we'll also look at conservation of momentum as well as conservation of energy uh, as we move on through the conservation laws.